Hey guys, I wanted to shoot a video to show you how easy and inexpensive it is to add a GPS tracker to your e-bike. Um, I've been using this tracker in my e-bike for the last two years and it's performed flawlessly. I really like it um, and would highly recommend it. It's basically uh, EE Link TK419. I liked it so much I picked up another one for uh, one of my other e-bikes. But uh, the reason I like it is it's it's really small and compact. It's it's thin. It's about half the size of other trackers that I've I've tested. Um, another thing I really like is that you can set it to track however frequently you want, but it's got something called Smart Angle Updating, which uh, some of the other trackers I've tried don't have. And what that'll do is basically send a tracking point every time you turn by a certain number of degrees. So if you're going around the block, it's going to actually track the exact direction you went as opposed to some of the other trackers, which are just going to send, you know, straight points from every 30 seconds. Um, the, you can order it directly from EE Link for 50 bucks. And uh, if you do that, I would highly recommend picking up the uh, auxiliary battery or backup battery. Normally I have this thing hooked up directly to my e-bike battery. So the e-bike battery is providing the juice. And if you pull the e-bike battery, the internal battery is going to last for oh, about three hours or so. But if you're going to pull your battery at work to charge it, it's nice to have the backup battery, which I think will last um, three days or longer. Now, one of the other reasons I really like the EE Link Tracker is the, uh, the app is one of the better ones out there. The manufacturer provides the tracking app free for life, and it, it, it works pretty well. Um, I've actually got mine configured so I can send it to the manufacturer site uh, server as well as, uh, say, a third-party server like GPS Trace, which is another great option for uh, monitoring. Um, they offer basically one device for free, um, and it works much better with notifications, i found. Um, if you have more than one device, I think they charge like two bucks a month or something. It's really, in, really inexpensive. Now, in terms of monitoring, you're going to need to put a, uh, a SIM in your uh, tracker, and pay you know a certain fee for monthly data or whatnot. What I found, and the, what I would highly recommend, let's see if I can focus on this. I I picked up recently a, oops, it's not zooming, not focusing correctly. Hopefully you can see that KeepGo, um, and they offer a SIM for. Um, normally it's like forty nine bucks. It's a world, uh, it's a worldwide SIM works everywhere. Um, but they, they offer it like at 50% off and it comes with three gigs of data, which is more data than you probably could use in, in the life of your uh, GPS tracker. Um, and to just keep that active, you have to pay, you only have to pay like, uh, I think it's $3 or something like that to top it up. So basically $3, you know, the initial cost of roughly 25 bucks because it's normally on sale and then $3 a year to keep the uh, monitoring going, which is fantastic. Um, you know, if you want to avoid all the monthly fees, the only downside, uh, is that it's a data only SIM. So you're going to need to configure your tracker with, uh, another SIM that's kind of got, um, texting, whatever, that's how you set up the tracker initially. But once you've got it set up, you only need a data only SIM. That's what I would recommend doing. Okay. So in terms of setting up the, um, the power to the tracker in your e-bike, I'm going to use this, uh, other tracker because it's a lot easier to show you um, rather than going into the, my e-bike. But but basically, you've got four wires here. This yellow one on the edge is a relay wire. That's if you want to cut the power to the uh, the motor. This black one and the red one essentially hook up. You can hook it up directly to your e-bike battery, um, positive and negative. The only thing you're going to want to do is add a fuse because um, obviously you don't want uh, straight power without a fuse going to this this tracker. But, but essentially the tracker can handle up to 72 volts. So you can throw whatever power you want from the e-bike battery. It's gonna, gonna step it down to the right voltage. Okay, so on my e-bike I had, there's a cable running basically to the charger up here uh, from the battery. Um, so this port where you charge in. So it already had a fuse and battery wires running to the charger. So I essentially just hooked in, if I can zoom in on that. Um, I basically tapped off that uh, charging port and then just 
kind of ran the, the battery wires to my tracker that way. So it was pretty easy. It was already fused for me. Um, but if you don't have a setup like that, like I said, definitely want to fuse your um, input from the e-bike battery going to the tracker. All right, so in terms of uh, fitting your tracker into your e-bike, it's obviously going to make a difference. Uh, everybody's frame is going to be different. But in the neck of my frame, this is how I've set mine up. Um, what I've got here is the external battery, or the additional battery, the tracker. And because it's just because I'm a geeky guy, I like uh, I have a Tile Pro in there as well. So I can, um, can track it via Bluetooth um, just as an extra backup. But... Um, I'll show you kind of how it fits in the frame. This is my bike's upside down, so keep that in mind. But the nice thing is it, it's got some room here. The reception for the GPS comes in here, and I've kind of got it right next to the routing hole. So you can see is it, when I put it in, uh, everything just kind of fits nicely in there with a little extra room for some wires. Hopefully that shows up on the video. Okay, and then, of course, once you get all the stuff secured in the neck of your frame, wherever you're going to put it, you're going to put your, your lock back in, lock everything up so it's all secure. Okay, to summarize, you basically want to uh, hook up your tracker to these, focus here, to the black wire and the red wire to your e-bike battery. Um, secure it in your, in your frame, however you want to do that. Hopefully you can fit in an external uh, backup battery. Um, and then um, that's pretty much it unless you want to add relay. Now let me talk about relay a little bit. So basically what relay is, is um, like if you want to cut the engine power and typically um, automotive relays, I'll show you one right here. Hold on a sec. So this is an automotive relay. I actually ordered it with the tracker but ended up not using it. As you can see it's pretty bulky. All we really need to do is take advantage of the fact that, that this yellow wire coming out, the relay wire, is going to be hooked up to this black wire when you've initiated the relay. Um, now, how can we use that? Well, basically, if you have a brake sensor or a, um, uh, a shift sensor in your e-bike, what's ended up happening is when you pull the brake circuit going through from the, from the, the controller to your brake, and when you initiate the brake, it's 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 completing that circuit so the, it, the controller will cut power to the to the motor same thing with the shift sensor when you shift it basically uh, completes that loop um, and cuts power so all we really have to do is tap into either a brake sensor or a shift sensor okay so let's see this in action so i've got the um basically got the throttle set up so that it's just turning my bike right now. So I'm just going to um, pull on the brake and you can see and when I do that, everything stops because basically the brake sensor, when you push the brake, that brake sensor loop is completed. Same thing with the gear shift sensor. So uh, now I'm going to take the app. I'm gonna, hold on a sec. Okay, so I got the app up. See if I can focus in on it and basically disconnect power, submit, give it a second, and voila. And then we can reconnect the bike power, just put it on recovery, submit. There you go.